Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at tapping. Now this is the place to start if you've never done tapping before or if you just want to brush up on basic techniques. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to do it. then we are going to look at some tapping but if you haven't done it already click like to like the video hit subscribe to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert bell so you don't miss any updates if you'd like a pdf with everything i've talked about there's a free workbook available you'll see a link below in the description so make sure you click that link and grab that workbook right then let's talk about tapping now eddie van halen is the first person that comes to mind when we think about tapping so maybe you're a fan of eddie or maybe you've just heard somebody else do this tapping stuff and you just want to get into it. So we're going to start right at the very beginning. So first things first, let's look at how you do the technique. Now, I'm right-handed, so I play with my left hand on the fretboard and I tap with my right hand. Obviously, if you're a left-handed guitar player, then it's going to be the other way around. So let's just start. Let's get your tapping hand. So if you're right-handed like me, it's going to be your right hand. If you're left-handed, it's going to be your left hand, okay? And what you want to do, there's a few different ways of tapping. Now, Eddie Van Halen, when he would play, when he would tap, he'd use his index finger. And I've seen a lot of people do that where they tap with an index finger. Personally, I like to use my middle finger. So they are the two fingers normally the most people tap with. So that's completely up to you. There's no right or wrong. There's no better or worse. The pros for me for tapping with my middle finger is I can be picking with my index finger and my thumb like this. And then when I come to tap and I bring this hand in, I can still hold the pick. Okay, so that is, for me, the reason why I choose to tap with my middle finger. However, like I said, the king of the tapping, the god of tapping, Eddie Van Halen, used his index finger. So if you are going to do that and you're holding a pick, there's a few things you need to think about is what you're going to do with your plectrum. You can stick it in your mouth and tap, or you can sort of tuck it in between your fingers like this tap you can hold it with other fingers so that's a sort of the for me a downside of using your index finger is what to do with the plectrum now you could if you as you're picking switch your pick to your middle finger and then bring your index finger to tap in or you can simply stick it in your mouth or whatever you want to do so that's probably the negative side of using your index finger like i said i prefer to use my middle just because i don't have to change my picking then at all Okay, so that's what we're going to do with this hand. Now, when tapping on the fretboard, you need to make quite a strong contact. So what you're probably going to find is when you start doing this, it might make the tips of your fingers sore. As you've probably found when you first started playing guitar, your fret hand, probably the tips got a bit sore, especially as you're going to bend in and vibrato. It's going to be a little bit the same with your other hand now when you start tapping. So let's just have a go. We're going to fret the fifth fret on the G string with our fret in hand. And then we're going to have a go at tapping on the 12th fret. Okay, that's the double dot on the G string. Now, if you're going to use your middle finger, I'm going to use my middle finger for this demonstration. Just hammer down for now on the 12th fret. And then just release it, okay? Just simply take it off. So hammer it and take it off. Hammer, remove. Hammer, remove. Okay, you want to catch the tip of your finger for maximum power. And when I'm hammer tapping, there's strength coming from my finger and my wrist. So I'm not just using my finger like this. I am moving my wrist as well as my finger, which just gives me plenty of strength on the tap because I do want little, you know, little taps. I'm using distortion as well just to help with all of this. If you do have a distortion pedal, kick that on. Okay, you can see my wrist is moving and my fingers coming down as well. Okay, so just tap and release. So what you might be finding at the moment, it sounds a bit like this. So you have a nice strong tap, but the note that comes after this fifth fret on the G string sounds a bit weak. So the way to do that is as you tap, just flick your finger kind of downwards to the floor. Now I'm over exaggerating today, it's a small movement. So if you're using your index finger, so when you see people tapping with an index, they do this, so it's so you're sort of pulling the, the the string downwards, just as you would do with a pull off. You know, if you just release your finger on a pull off, the second note is not quite as strong. When you pull down, they're the same 
level, the same volume. So the same with the tap. So tap, and then as you're coming off, so move your finger towards the floor. Okay, I'm over exaggerating. I'll just do it as I normally would. So that this is without my finger moving towards the floor. That's just lifting straight off. And then my finger going towards the floor. You can hear straight away, there's so much more power. And off. Towards the floor. So you're sort of flicking that string a little bit. Now that's an issue a lot of people have when they start tapping is the second note, so not the tap note, just sounds a little bit weak and a bit quiet and a bit weedy. So that's what you need to be doing. And that's going to be exercise one. We're going to hold the fifth fret and we're literally just going to tap the twelfth over and over again. Okay, so there's a few other things that's going on when tapping. Now, if I didn't do any muting at all, it'd end up sounding like this. Can you hear there's just a, a lot of noise going on? So these are the other things you need to bear in mind is with this hand, your fretting hand, anything underneath your finger. So in this case, the B and the E you need to mute. So we don't want a nice rounded finger like this. You need to sort of angle your finger across so that the B and the E strings are muted, okay? So that's taken care of by your fretting hand. Okay, and then the other stuff. Normally when I'll do this, I'll keep my thumb over the top, which takes care of the E string. And then the other strings, you need to mute with this hand, your tapping hand, okay? So when I'm tapping, you can hear that. I'm resting my palm, this part of my palm, on the, the low strings. Because if I didn't, this, they're all susceptible. They're all open to noise. The minute I bring in the mute in, So I'm always double muting this low E because my thumb is covering it and the palm is as well. Also, the tip of my fretting hand finger is lightly touching the D string. Okay, so that is open. The tip, it starts muting it, okay? So I'm sort of double muting that one as well. I'm muting it with my tapping hand and also the tip of my finger of this hand. So my fretting hand is covering off the B and the E for now. It's also touching the D to mute it. My thumb is going to me the low E as well. Now you don't have to do your thumb, you can do it more like this if you want, but I'm going to for now. And then my tapping hand is also muting the low strings, okay? And you can press pretty hard on those low strings. It's not like palm muting. We well, actually want to hear the note. We don't want to hear the note. That's the point of muting. So you can push quite hard down on the low E, the A, and the D, okay? And let's go back to the exercise. So 12, 5. So it's quite a lot going on there for such a straightforward technique now some of you might already be able to do that muting straight away and that also might be new to some people as well so it's all about getting the technique right in the first place just so it sounds nice tidy and clean so here's exercise two we're going to do the same thing but this time we're going to fret the seventh fret on the g so we're going to tap on the 12th to the seventh fret on the g okay that's exercise two. Exercise three, we're going to do this. We're going to do four taps with our fifth fret in the G string, and then four taps with our finger in the seventh fret on the G, and that sounds like this. Okay, so that's exercise three, okay? We're just getting used now to moving this hand, our fretting hand, along with the taps. One more exercise for you for this video, and then in another videos, I'll show you some more Eddie Van Halen style and more complicated stuff. This time, we're gonna do four taps with your fretting hand fret and the fifth fret on the G. We're gonna move it to the fourth fret and do four taps. Back to the fifth fret and do four taps. And then up to the seventh fret and do four taps. Always tapping on the 12th fret on the G, and that sounds like this. Okay, so the aim of this is not speed for now, it's just to get the technique right, and just to make sure that you can hear the notes. Both the tap note, 
and also the note that comes after it as well, the note you're fretting. So let's say that for now is enough for you to practice just to get the hang of the tap in. So quick recap of all of the stuff we've talked about, okay? First things first, choose a finger. You're either going to tap your index or your middle. Figure out then with what you're going to do with the pick. So if you're obviously tapping with your index, you need to find some way you can stick the plectrum. If you're tapping with your middle, you can just simply hold it as it was and tap. As you're tapping, pull downwards a little bit, not too much. Some people as well, like, do go up. I just find that a little bit more clunky. Down ever so slightly. That's coming up, it does work, but for me, I think down is a much better way of doing it, okay? So that's that. Think about the muting as well, but between your fretting hand and also your tapping hand, okay? You want sort of a combination of muting just so we don't end up with this. And a big old mess, okay? So t nice and tidy. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video and that's been a good introduction to you for tapping. If you haven't done already, click like to like the video, hit subscribe to subscribe to the channel and click that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. If you want a PDF with all of that stuff written out, you'll see a link to it below in the description. So make sure you grab that free PDF. Also, I have an online guitar school called Fretlix with loads of cool courses and lessons guaranteed to help you become a better guitarist. Hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you again soon.